is I actually have to stop the guts from moving into and, and, and down to the right. I have to get them going up and back to the left. So, so Tim had a question in regards to cutting, and I, and I thought it would just be a great way to represent the entire cutting sequence because he had a question as to how the, the ER and the IR was related um, because there's a lot of ways that, that cutting is described and, and we do it very, very specifically. But what we're doing is we're looking at, we're looking at the, the uh, internal pelvic activity, especially in regard to the pelvic diaphragm, and there's a sequence of events that would occur that, that it also influences the, the external rotation, internal rotation component as we move into and out of the cut. And so if we, if we divided the, the, the pelvic diaphragm into quarters and we look at how we orient the lower extremity. So this is a right foot cut. So we're going into a right foot cut and we're coming out of a right foot cut. And so to place my lower extremity before I make ground contact, so this is prior ground contact, to get my leg into position, I have to have an eccentric yielding uh, position of the, of the pelvic diaphragm. That allows me to extend my leg underneath me and to position it. But everything here is, is still in an externally rotated orientation, um, which would be a, a position of, of inhalation relative to the pelvic diaphragm. So this is, there's no ground contact, so I have no propulsive capability here. So this is all about positioning. So I'm pushing from, from the posterior aspect. I've got an overcoming contraction on the, on the posterior right. I've got a yielding eccentric contraction on the anterior right to get my leg into position. As I move towards the ground and I start to make ground contact, my early propulsive position is I'm still eccentrically oriented, but now because I'm in ground contact, I have an overcoming contraction that is going to push in the in the other direction. If I did not have an overcoming contraction, I would still be moving into the ground at an accelerated rate, and so that's why I have to have an overcoming contraction here. I'm gonna yield here because I need internal volume to start to shift backwards because as I get to max propulsion, which is my point of turnaround in, in the cut, I have to immediately have a concentric overcoming contraction of the anterior diaphragm, which is now internal rotation. And this is my max propulsive position. So I have to have my medial calcaneus on the ground. This is a pronated foot position and an IR, a relative IR position of the hip. As I push myself back out of this and I go into to late propulsion, I'm going to recapture that position of, of the, the pelvic diaphragm that I had going into the cut. The difference is, as I'm moving into the cut, my guts are going to the right. As I hit my overcoming contraction here, I immediately kick my guts back to the left. That's what gets me going in this direction, but because I'm, I'm now moving uh, up from the ground and I'm reducing the amount of propulsion that I can produce on the ground, because again, this is my point of max, and as I move this way, I can't push as hard to the ground. So I had to kick my guts hard this way. Now, now in my late propulsive phase, again, I'm looking at a position of the hip that's going to, to ER me and turn me in the opposite direction. And then I'm, again, leaving the ground with my right foot. And so the pelvis, again, looks like this. But now instead of going towards the ground, I'm moving away from my, my ground contact position. Okay, so let's go through a right foot cut using the same principles that we just talked about on the whiteboard. So I, I rewrote these a little bit so you can see them. But this, just so you understand where we are. So this is with the foot off the ground or leaving the ground. This is my initial ground contact going into the cut, but it's also my late propulsive phase coming out of the cut. And then this is my turnaround where my greatest concentric activity is in the anterior pelvic diaphragm. But what it looks like, so if I'm looking at this initial phase of the right foot cut, I am, I am stepping towards the cut. So my foot is off the ground. So there is no propulsive phase. I cannot, I cannot produce propulsion. So the extremity is positioned in a relative position of external rotation, inhalation, if you will. And I have an eccentric yielding contraction of that anterior pelvic diaphragm. That's what allows me to position my leg below me as I'm moving towards the cut. As I make my initial ground contact, because I was eccentrically and yielding to position my foot, I'm still in an eccentric contraction, but because now I have some ground contact, I begin my propulsive phase. So now I'm eccentrically oriented, but I'm overcoming and pushing up 
against, uh, away from the ground. And so that's where I get my eccentric overcoming contraction. On the back side, I was concentrically oriented, again, to make sure that, that the guts were moving down and forward, which, again, allows me to position my lower extremity. At this point, I'm starting to yield in that position because I'm going to make a turnaround and I'm going I'm to flip-flop the, the orientation of the pelvic diaphragm because what I have to do is I actually have to stop the guts from moving into and, and, and down to the right. I have to get them going up and back to the left. So I'm going to flip-flop my orientation here. So now I'm going to be concentric anterior and eccentric posterior. And so what that would look like as I'm stepping into the cut and I hit my, my point of turnaround, this is where the hip will go back because the anterior pelvic diaphragm is coming up to, to achieve its concentric overcoming position. I'm going to be eccentric and yielding here, and this is what's going to allow me to make my turnaround. So as I step into the cut, I'm at my max propulsive phase here. My guts are coming down and in. They start to shift back, and then I push them up and to the left, and that's what allows me to turn and go in the opposite direction. So the muscle activity as I go through the cut mirrors itself going in and out. The difference is the direction and the flow of the internal forces which is produced by the guts. So I feel like as soon as I understand both the orientation uh, as far as eccentric, concentric, the behavior as far as yielding and overcoming, as well as where I want the guts to be spinning within the activity, exercise selection kind of writes itself. It, 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 it actually does. The thing that you have to recognize is there is any number of, of exercises that can represent each of these orientations and then the relative direction that, that you're producing tension. And that's how you start to individualize this. But from a conceptual standpoint, you're absolutely right. So the question then becomes is, for instance, if I put somebody in a split stance activity to, to create one of these orientations and then eccentric uh, or uh, yielding versus overcoming, is that a half kneeling position or is it a split squat or is it some form of, of medicine ball throw? It's like all of those qualify based on these orientations. The question that becomes is what are the needs of the individual? But at least you've categorized them to allow you to make the appropriate exercise selection based on what their needs really are.